Hello and welcome F5 community to another edition of Dev Central Connects. I'm your host today, Aubrey, and I've got a, an action-packed show for you today. Um, we are going to introduce a, a couple of news items, I think. We've got a couple of live guests for you as well. Um, and we have uh, um, two, actually, articles that we're going to be uh, reviewing today. So we're going to do this a little bit differently. I would love for you guys to watch the video. And from there, if you have any questions, please make sure you post them in the chat and we will get to, uh, you know, all, all of those questions as we can. Another thing to quickly note, October is Cybersecurity Awareness Month. So keep an eye out for everything that we have going on. We've got a number of different things. We're doing uh, a couple of collaborative efforts with F5 Corporate Marketing. Uh, as well as some, I guess, uh, spooky treats, all of our own that we will kind of unleash upon the world as we go. Um, in addition to that, this is uh, another interesting month because we have a quarterly security notification coming up on the 19th. So you will start to see uh, a little bit of QSN notifications and we will have a pop-up show that's available for you to, uh, to tune into also on the 19th. In case you are in need of some assistance or support, we'll be there to, uh, to really make sure that, that we've got you uh, absolutely covered. Last thing I want to mention is we also have podcasts coming for you. So this has been a very, very requested feature, and we have them coming. So uh, you will be seeing Dev Central Connects and This Month in Security out on podcasts with a slight delay, probably a couple of days from when they first launch on uh, on YouTube and the other outlets we have. So, with all that out of the way, please enjoy a portion of my interview with Ken Aurora. Um, please, again, questions, put them in the chat, and uh, we'll talk to you afterwards. Ooh. Um, funny, funny enough, uh, October is Cybersecurity Awareness Month, and uh, one of the things that we're focused on for the very first week in October uh, is access. So Zero Trust really falls into, uh, into that category, and it's something that our users have asked about quite a bit recently. There, has been, uh, there have been questions about, you know, um, where do we fit in access? Where are we looking to go in access? What is the difference between this Zero Trust network access that you guys offer uh, zero trust application access and and you know where is f5 going to be playing in in zero trust uh going forward um so the way i usually try to answer this or talk about this is um i separate out the zero trust the zt part of those acronyms from the applicant the layer the level at which we apply them the network layer the application access layer or some other layer <clears throat> i think f5 and i'll get to this but i think f5 has products that operate all these layers. And as we think about what's what's um, where things are going, some of our rec recent acquisitions also have a key role in terms of where we think uh, Zero Trust is going to next. So first to start at the Zero Trust layer, there is a key set of principles uh, that I think embody what Zero Trust is. As a security practitioner, you could all say it all boils down to being paranoid, but, but a, li a little more granular than that. Um, some of the, prin the principles I think about are use least privilege, when you use least privilege, all, still always um, verify. And then you and verifying isn't enough. You still want to watch and you want to adjust and adapt. Those are key principles of zero trust. And you can apply them to the network layer. You can apply them to the application layer. You know, it, it's all about, I want to make sure I know who you are before I let you into my network. We just, you know, network deparameterization, you know, any device, anywhere, whatever you call it, that's happened. That happened 10, 15 years ago. And so the world had to adapt and you couldn't be network centric. That's not to say networks still don't play a role. They're still for say remote workers, VPN still has a key part, uh, key role to play. So in that sense, if you're in a, you know, distinguishing whether you're in a VPN or not is a form of network, a network layer zero trust. But for the general application world, I can't VPN you in if you're going to a banking app, for example. So now I need to do something else. And so and this is what's being called zero trust application access saying, it's not rooted in your network posture, it's rooted in who are you as a user and, you know, maybe what device and what's your device posture like. Um, and and the other thing that is part of Beyond Corp and part of user access is that it isn't good enough that, you, you know, it's part of um, being paranoid. You're saying, 
just because you know a password, you know a shared secret, that's good enough. But maybe you really want to do something stronger like MFA. Oh, and I, my, my, my mic was muted. Awesome. So <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that, uh, you know, that teaser from my interview with Ken. Um, it, is, uh, it is a pretty fun interview, and I, I recommend you, you take a look at some of the other stuff that we talked about as well. Um, but, uh, you know, you can check that out on youtube.com slash devcentral if you're interested. Now, I've already pulled Boo onto, uh, onto the stream. But I have a number of other people hello, that are hello. here with me today. So, uh, hey, Boo, how are you? Very good, thanks. Can you hear me? I can, yes. Awesome. And uh, we've got a, a couple of guests on as well. First, uh, we've got Ken Aurora, who we just saw. Hi, everyone. How you doing, Ken? I'm doing well. <laughs> awesome. And then we also have Mr. Fred Wittenberg, who will be showing a video from him as well. How are you this morning, Fred? Doing well. How about yourself? I'm doing great, thanks. It's barely morning for uh, you and me, but... You know, for these other guys, it's breakfast time, so so nice. Now, oh, no audio. Yes, thank you guys. Sorry about that. I, I, I saw that quick. Uh, so that's good stuff. And we have actually a question here. So I've got from Mr. Jason Rahm, actually, who's watching. He was backstage for a little bit, but uh, so we had a full crew, I think. So what comes after theory and implementation, Ken? What tools and controls exist to validate zero trust once deployed? So, right, there's there, I, I break up tools and controls into sort of two buckets, two categories, um, and there's tools in both. So the one is, uh, the analogy I often use is with um, a house or a bank or you're just trying to safeguard some physical piece of property. You put locks on the doors, you put maybe latches on the windows, and um, those are basic, you know, deterministic, what I need to do. The equivalent of that are our um, authentication, which, you know, we, everybody understands. And authentication takes many forms. It could be a shared secret, like a password. It could be the event, uh, device authentication with a certificate. It could be something more passive, like fingerprinting of a device. And then we don't necessarily pay enough attention these days, but I think we'll be paying more and more to authorization. Well, great. I know who you are. Or I know what device you are. What are you allowed to do? And again, there are controls there. Um, um, authorization controls, um, to say um, access lists or, or an example of things like that. And then um, the other bucket is what I'll call the visibility bucket, um, a situational awareness. And that I think is what you see going on. Start off with you know maybe Sims. Um, now you can see uh, XDR as um, things we're doing there to actually um, be aware of what's going on and to detect in near real time. Um, any escapes, things that make it past your locks and latches. So that's my short answer. Okay. No, I, I actually, I fielded another another question from a, a, an SE prior to the show uh, that was curious about, you know, we hear a lot about zero trust network access and zero trust app access. You and I spoke about that during the interview as well. Um, are there other portions of zero trust? I mean, when you, when you talk about a, uh, a, Full featured. I hear some other vendors, especially at, at, at places like Black Hat, full featured zero trust, um, you know, policy. Is there more to it than just the network uh, and app access? Um, there, there definitely is. Um, one area that I think um, is is starting to um, be people are starting to be aware of now is zero trust applied to workloads that make up your application. So network is kind of the road to your application. The application access often focuses on the API or web pages, which is sort of the front door to your house now or, or your, your perimeter. What about what goes on inside? And that workload is another area of zero trust is something we can pay attention to. In other words, how do I authenticate a workload? Same principles. How do I authenticate a workload? What is a workload allowed to do or not do? And how do I detect anomalous behaviors if my workloads maybe been compromised and going crazy and reading a bunch of files, encrypting and writing back to the file system, which it doesn't normally do. Okay. Yeah, and I think that's something that you and I spoke about a little bit too, package management and things of that nature being sort of involved uh, as well. Yeah. So, interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and you can shift left all that too, and I haven't even talked to the shift left like you were alluding to with package management. Yeah. 
Okay, so it seems like a very, very full-featured uh, possibilities here for for zero trust or having less trust. Um, I'm sure we will we will also have a couple of news articles that we uh, want to get your take on as well in a moment, Ken. But uh, in the meantime, actually, I'm going to pop this guy off. In the meantime, I did want to also tee up uh, another video really quickly. So. Um, one of the things that I wanted to take care of for October Cybersecurity Awareness Month, we had a, um, a project where we were going to tell scary hack stories on week four, right? Week one this week is access, and we're talking zero trust, and you'll find that the articles are also pretty much related. But scary hack stories was an idea, and I, I thought, boy, wouldn't it be great if we had a couple of shorts? Well, Fred, who's on the show with us today, gave me a couple of a uh, couple of really quick shorts and stories about um you know about hacks but this one was just um more than i guess i wanted for um a short it actually was much more of a full featured article and i'm going to give you a, a teaser now he gave me a demo i'm not going to show you the demo um I, that's something that you got to go to youtube.com slash dev central for but you will see a bit about ip intelligence and automation of said IP intelligence. So, oh, I actually still have to uh, go ahead and share this guy. One second. Preparation, eh? <laughs> Everyone shared the same score, Sherry story, but six to nine months ago when Log4j hit. Um, so today, today we're gonna talk a little bit about protocol inspection. Protocol inspection for F5 means a couple different things. It also it means protocol compliance, but it also means signature-based inspection. Um, so signature-based inspection allows us to basically turn the F5 AFM into a full-blown IPS, and as well as an IDS. So protocol compliance just allows you to check for things like making sure you're running HTTP 1.1 or 1.2 or whatever your protocol you wanna run through is. Um, the signature-based stuff is where it gets a little bit fun, and that's what we're gonna focus on today. Um, so it uses a subset of snort syntax type rules um, what's really cool about this is you can take other people's rules and you can import them, and we're gonna talk about that in a minute. Um, but it, it allows you to do deep packet inspection. It's a lot more efficient than the traditional I rule. Now, I don't wanna take away from what F5 says to do when these events hit. You know, you can always do I rules. There's typically ASM signatures. or different ways to protect yourself. Not many people look at this as an option, but it's actually a lot more efficient, and it actually keeps track of the entire session. It doesn't look at just the session initialization, which is what typically AFM does, as well as a lot of other products. So it's nice that it looks bidirectionally and kind of keeps everything in the flow the entire time of the flow. Um, so I say this is, I titled this sharing is caring because it truly is. So when Log4j hit, obviously a lot of people were impacted. So a lot of vendors and security community all got together and said like, let's get this done as quickly as possible and solve for this as quickly as possible, which was fantastic. Um, the guy that you see here, James Affeld, has been phenomenal throughout this entire ordeal. He wrote a couple articles that you can see up here. The first one talks about how to convert a snort rule. So if you've got sort signatures or you're a subscriber of snort's um, pay service, you can pull in their signatures pretty easily and it walks you through step-by-step step of how to do that. The second one actually talks about this specific attack for Log4j CVE 2021 44228. Um, this specifically literally talks you, talks you through how to import every single bit of RSA signature. So RSA is one of the good guys out there. Um, I, I love this story because it was like everyone literally got together and told the evil villain to go away and you know the good guys are standing there saying, you know, we'll be ready for you next time. So RSA was kind enough to share their intelligence with us and allow us to build a signature that got all this together. Um, so with that said, you know, for me, I, I like to actually demo this out. I'm a big automation fan, especially when it comes to like SecOps and stuff like that. So I built a little collection that I put out there on my in my, uh, my Git repo. Um, these are a couple just sample attacks, really, really easy. And then we're just gonna walk through the logs and show you what that looks like. Um, so here, it's just a really simple F5, right? I've got um, Kali Linux running. I've got a couple different, just very easy attacks. You can see I'm banging on the server right now. Let me walk you through what the F5 looks like pre, and then we'll walk through what the F5 looks like post. So again, I'm just running Juice Shop, right? Super, super simple, vulnerable server that everyone knows about. If you don't know about Juice Shop, go out, check it out. So the demo was just too good to share the whole thing. But uh, if, uh, if anyone out there who's checking this out wants to go see that, um, I can tell you that, you know, it was pretty exciting. Fred, you know, what was the, uh, I guess, was there a, a particular inspiration for, uh, for that? I'm imagining that came from customer interaction? It's correct. Um, so everyone 
obviously was affected by log4j um our my customers are pretty much a big automation shop so while you can do this a couple of different ways security by automation always uh is, is always a, a better way to go at least with my customers so like a lot of right click option actions to be able to mitigate things or, or what we focus on with this customer um as well as other customers but um secops has always been fun and love getting a little bit into coding a little bit into that whole world so uh it was fun and it worked out pretty well yeah, no, that was uh, it was surprising to see, like, you know, the 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 JSON and just how quickly you got mm -hmm. stuff set stood up for for defense there. Yeah, and it's pretty awesome from a JSON. I, I personally love JSON. I love the structure of it. Um, I actually think it makes it a lot easier to build these signatures when you look at um, like Postman or some script or something to interact with a RESTful API. It's a lot easier to see what the signature is doing, in my opinion, than looking at like TMSH or even clicking through the web UI. I find it a lot easier to work with and a lot more interactive. Just for me personally, um, but you know, it's each their own. It's just my preference. No, I, I also have a, a real quick question for Ken. Um, any any thoughts on? I mean, Log Four J was was a huge uh, huge piece of news earlier this year. Um, any any way that zero trust might have helped to defend against that? I mean, that was a a unique situation. But as long as we're talking zero trust. Um, sure, sure. No, um, absolutely. That uh, workload, um, briefly, you know, that workload example I gave would be a perfect example of that. Um, what part of Log4j was compromising a workload, the path is, is a little bit longer story, but it compromised a workload. And it had you, and so it that workload, you could have um, tightened down the permission so it couldn't have done what it did. Um, it couldn't have talked to other, other um, workloads, other processes, or you could have just had, or go to the other, the other bucket of things and watch it. And you would notice anomalies in how it's behaving, and you could then sequester it, sandbox it in different ways. For example, use network segmentation. Um, and so this is how network and application, all these layers kind of tie together. Absolutely. I love, I love the demo. Thanks, thanks, Fred. Thank you. <laughs> cool. Now, Fred, that's uh, IPI. Is that a part of AP, uh, AFM now? Yeah, so that's protocol security, just to be clear. So IPS, not necessarily IPI. So. Um, it's a little tricky. If you buy AFM base, it does include IPS. Um, AFM is obviously an add-on with say like, um, you know, if you are like an LTM customer and then you add on AFM, you do also have to add on the IPS modular. And then there's the, the option to add your own signatures. Air5 has a subscription service as well. So it is a full end-to-end -end solution that there are a couple ways to different, a couple different ways to get there. But if you're an AFM customer today and it's AFM standalone, it's there, you've got it. There's a bunch of signatures that are already on the box. You can even go down to downloads.f5.com and pull in the new signatures. You will see some that say there's subscription that requires subscription to be used. Those are the ones that you do need to subscribe to the service to actually make use of. But there are quite a few signatures that are there by default. And obviously we walk through how to create your own. So you always have that option as well. Fantastic. And I have uh, I have IPI in the brain. It's been like a constant That's thing okay. for me. So <laughs> it really no has been. Get that too, though. Get that too. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. No <laughs> Exactly. It, it, can't, it can't hurt. <laughs> Certainly can't hurt. Okay. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. And I hope everyone uh, heads out there to uh, kind of, you know, check out the rest of that video. Again, the, the demo is pretty cool. We actually run traffic at it. So uh, if you're curious about what F5 can do as an IPS, that's the, that's the way to see it. All right. So it looks like we also have a little bit of time for some news. Um, I, I was surprised. I, Boo and I had a bit of a, a, you know, a bit of a discussion yesterday about are, are we going to be able to, uh, you know, to, to put that in there. And hang on, it looks like I also have to to share again. But uh, Boo, do you have, uh, I guess, some some news coming up for us? I got the. Yeah, I guess while you're queuing that up, I can I can kind of speak to it already. But just in the past week. And I think that's coming up now. So just in the past week, it was announced, and and this was this this is being discussed, but I think this is like actually officially accepted now. Is Istio is now submitted into and part of uh, the CNCF as an incubating project, which is pretty cool to see because Istio has been around for a while. The whole idea of service mesh. Um, I think Istio. I believe they had a survey, a CNCF survey. Istio is the uh, most widely deployed service mesh out there. Um, this actually kind of involves F5 to a degree because F5 actually has had a incubation uh, called Aspen Mesh. And I think that incubation has now progressed into productization, uh, which is pretty cool to see. F5 has a number of 
incubation projects that are always running at the same time. Um, and and seeing that graduate into something that uh, productized is pretty cool. So, you know, CNCF and Linux Foundation, just that's the place to be if you want your open source project to kind of get legs and and uh, and reach that um, escape velocity. And so really cool to see uh, Istio make it into that at this point. Um, I think this has a, a real um, significance when it comes to workload security as well and, and zero trust management. And so having policy enforcement and having uh, the monitoring and the security uh, from a service mesh perspective you know, only can help out. Like as Ken's talking through some of those scenarios, I'm just thinking of um, of pivot points in the network. And pivot points, you know, used to be from a server perspective, and you can kind of stop them or not stop them, but you can kind of watch for them from a network perspective. Well, now everything is all cloud native, and so now you just have workloads they have to be able to look at as pivot points inside the network. So if they're compromised, if they're running some code, and that code could um, you know, it could be just uh, a compromised uh, source repository um, that pulls down something that's malicious. And we've seen that happen over uh, the past few, the past year or so, there's been a number of accounts of that at this point. We've talked about on the news here before uh, as well. So um, everybody should have a service, service mesh. Everybody can trust Istio now. It's in as an incubation project. Really cool to see. Really cool. To, it's going to be cool to see what the next couple of years are like for Istio as well. Uh oh. Istio Khan. Interesting. All right. Now, 4, now, attendees. Wow. Yeah. Now, Ken, uh, I'm curious, is that, uh, so with Aspen, Aspen Mesh, Mesh is, that, is, that, is, that is that something, something that the uh, office of the CTO gets involved with as well, or is that still truly separate? Um, well, it is separate. And, you know, if you look back a little in the history of Aspen Mesh, it started off as a little incubation idea, a seed idea, and then it grew from there. Um, office of the CTO, does a little pitch here with Office CTO. We do sponsor a, a number of different uh, projects. We call them the Innovate F5 Project Greenhouse type things where just some F5 is interested in solving a problem, maybe a little crazy, get started and so on. Um, it graduates from there and potentially turns into something like Aspen Mesh, which gets a team and more funding and so on. And at that point, the role of the Octo is just to kind of help steer, guide, be technical advisors. That's where Aspen Mesh was. But a little pitch for you know even getting to that point. Um, Office CTO likes to Project Greenhouse. Look it up. Project Greenhouse. Okay, that will cool. definitely uh, put make a note to that too. Um, kind of in our uh, in our show page, if you will, on community.f5.com. Uh, for those of you that that don't know that, also we have a um, a Dev Central Connects group where all the information for the show will be listed. So all the video clips all of the news articles and, and whatnot, even stuff that we didn't quite get to, uh, which there'll be one or two things, I think, today. Um, yeah. So that is there. There have been, you know, just a shout out for things that you can find on community uh, community.f5.com as well that have to do with the greenhouse stuff is that sometimes the Innovate F5 projects, once they make it into um, the, the world, out into the public, uh, one of the outlets is on Dev Central. And so we've had, I believe, Second Sight, uh, is one that recently graduated. Um, I think that's public at this point. Anyways, yep. I, I think they have a page on community.f5.com. And there was one just a couple months ago as well. I can't recall it. We'll throw that into the show thread as well. Uh, but once that got public, uh, created a page for kind of a landing page that everybody can go check out what that project is and help support it. The GitHub repo is out there. It's public. You can do pull requests if you want to see a, a feature in there. Open Telemetry Hotel is another one that graduated nice nice and actually fred are you seeing uh kind of i guess um any sort of sidecar type activities in in your customer whether it be istio or envoy or is there a debate there amongst your customers that you're seeing not not really to be honest with you Aubrey. not not at this point okay yeah that was something that um you know i i know you're in uh you're a solutions engineer and service provider when i was in uh, SP as well. My customer was like nonstop about, you know, sidecars and, and Envoy yeah, are... and when are we productizing our stuff in Envoy and well, can you look at Istio and it's okay. I figured I'd, I'd see if it was out there for you. Um, okay. Uh, I guess next up on news, I also uh, pulled in a, a zero trust article from the UK. Um, you know, it's just must be my, my, 
spending a ton of time with Aaron Brailsford. I get all this UK news, it seems like, every week. So this one is really just an article on how Zero Trust is boosting business security. I figured I'd put this up here uh, as a more high-level conversation if you're still really, really new to, uh, you know, to the, the idea of Zero Trust. So one of the things that really, you know, it, it, that, that surprised me, I guess, even looking at it, it, things that I never really thought to, you know, to consider with Zero Trust, um, things like, you know, obviously an, an improved user experience. You know, when I take a look at, at, you know, as a user myself being, you know, part of, a, a, of, of Zero Trust principles as well, um, I do have an easier time navigating the, the systems that I use day to day, um, which is kind of nice. Um, SSO is, is, you know, a, a portion of this and plays a role as well. And this, you know, this was the one that really kind of, I think people are, are used to having security policies that just grow and they're just massive. Um, but I guess, you know, w one of the things that is true, uh, about zero trust is that you, you can have simpler security policies if you start with deny absolutely everything and then just kind of build up little by little. Um, it seems that things kind of get a, a, a little bit easier that way. Now, have you seen, uh, I, I, Fred, have you seen any of this, you know, the, this kind of activity in your customers? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, our, my customer uses our product for Zero Trust. Um, they initially started going down building their own and realized that, um, you know, it made a little more sense to look at something that was more commercialized that was a little bit, um, you know, I don't want to say more mature, but a little bit further down. The road that maybe they were with their own you know in-house project so yes i'm not i'm also a customer <laughs> nice that that's fantastic to hear obviously mm -hmm. we, we we love hearing that um and and ken any thoughts on the uh, yeah, especially, especially the, the, the 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 simpler security policies portion um yeah the, no uh, uh, no i was just thinking as i was reading about that sso gets mentioned but you know sso is it's, it, sso is an example of simplifying things as a security practitioner, anything we can do to, to not be friction, but actually reduce friction and make it easier to use is great. And uh, I want to plug um, one of the products that came in from our shape acquisition, uh, Recognize, where it doesn't even, you don't even have to do SSO. It just, it just says, oh, well, you've been acting normally. You've been doing sort of things that I expect you to do, looking at behavioral analytics and saying, I'm going to reduce friction by not making, making you re-log in after, say, a, a session, uh, maybe a session extension type thing. And that's another perfect example of how we can take what we know from from the behavioral analytics and use it to reduce customer friction, not add friction. Awesome, that's uh, that that is uh, great, great to hear. Um, so I hope this has been helpful for our audience. I mean, we've we've had a couple of interesting chats on on zero trust. It has been a hot topic. Um, I thought there would be a little bit more in terms of questions. So guys, get out there and do your questions. Um, but you know, we will uh, obviously be able to forward anything else that we get. Uh, and we do answer your questions on YouTube. So that's another thing to, to simply note. If you go back and take a look at these videos, uh, including the live stream and ask a question, uh, that is something that, that uh, our, our whole Dev Central team is very, very quick to, to try and manage. So I Still do want to say... questions from uh, videos that are like eight years old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is true. <laughs> We, we, we take care of uh, even even the old stuff. Uh, but with that, I did want to say, you know, thank you so much to our guests, Ken and Fred, for popping on. I, I appreciate your time today, gentlemen. I know you're both busy. My pleasure. Thank you. It's been, it's been fun. Awesome. awesome. Well, well, on that note, I am going to move on. And I guess, how, how, what'd you think, Boo? This is a new, new way to, to, to run the show, I guess. Yeah. Good time. Uh, you know, we got one thing that we wanted to highlight is just that all of the content we kind of use YouTube to drop all this stuff. Um, for the most part, I think folks can kind of expect something to drop on Tuesday mornings. People that are really keen on the channel have their notifications turned on and they're subscribed. They'll know that already that we have a, a nice video that drops in the mornings and we can come on and talk about it live. Great when we can have guests uh, join us as well and kind of add that extra content or context around stuff so maybe some behind the scenes stuff and and that kind of thing um, but this is an opportunity for everybody to interact with folks that uh, you might not normally get to interact with within f5 and outside of f5 as well so uh really cool to see awesome well if you liked it 
please don't forget to click like and subscribe as Boo just mentioned, right? If you, if you have a subscription, then you are going to have all the latest stuff that we have to give. And uh, we hope to see you again next week on Dev Central Connects. Well, thanks for checking out that video. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. While you're down there, hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. You might want to check out one of these videos over here. And if you haven't already, go check out community.f5.com. This is where all the Dev Central Connects hosts hang out, as well as the rest of the community. It's free to sign up, and we'll see you there.